I want to spend a couple of minutes just talking about how you can organize your watercolors and your experimentations so that it's easier for you to remember what you've done and also be able to go back and use it as a reference tool. In your handouts uh, throughout the lessons you'll find that I've created these little templates and what I've done with these templates is you can actually cut your paper. It works best with 140 pound press watercolor paper whether it's hot press, cold press, or soft press and this easily goes through the printer. Uh, I have, I think I, I've put in one that's 5x7 and another that you can put in an 8x10. And what I did was I took sh larger sheets of watercolor paper and I cut them into the smaller size so that I could come up with this little template that I could then uh, use consistently throughout. Previously, before I did that, I used to create something that looked like this. And I find that, again, it doesn't matter how you do it, but I think it's important that you do something each time you buy a new tube of paint. On this particular page, you'll see that I have Daniel Smith. The name of it is Bismuth Van Dant Yellow. And then this is Holbein Cadmium Yellow Lemon. And this one is Windsor Newton Cadmium Yellow. They are all yellows and all three of them are very similar in their color. Here I've used the transparency to, to show how transparent. And it's nice that if for some reason you're trying to... Uh, it's nice to have a record of the different colors because you can compare them. And if for some reason, let's say Daniel Smith stopped using, uh, stop manufacturing this particular paint, you could look on any of the charts and find a substitute for it. So one of the things that happens for me when I get a new tube of paint is I go through a series of exercises and as I've learned a little bit more, this kind of format is better for me and that's what I've provided for you in the lessons. But I also want to talk about storage and one of the things that I've done is I, I've used these little envelopes which are, are a plastic protector that comes in and this is nice because as you can see I've created a lot of these over the years and I, I just simply am using one of these plastic templates that you can just come in and you can draw a circle and then paint into the circle. Uh, here I was comparing different purples and so I was able to create all on one sheet. And so having an organizational plan is probably a good idea as you progress more and more and as you accumulate more colors into your palette. Uh, I don't know about you, but it gets addicting. You start seeing, oh, I love that color, oh, this color, that color. And so you find out that you end up having more paint than you really ever need. But it's always exciting to have a new color. And it, to me, it's a good record for you to be able to go back and look at. Um, for instance, I really love this Windsor New Newton Cobalt Violet. And I also like the, the ultramarine color that I looked at on the tube. But in looking at these uh, particular swatches that I've done, the pigment is very heavily granulated. And I may not remember that. And so going back and checking through your reference at a later period of time is a really good thing to do because, as I said, you might come across a tube of paint that's been sitting for a while. And as long as you know the name of it, you can look back into your own reference library and just get a kind of a refresher as to what the paint might or may, may uh, you can go back into your reference material and you can come up and look through and see just as a point of reference to remind yourself what the paint will actually do for you. If you're looking to create a smooth wash of sky that's just completely clear but you wanted it to have a little bit of a violet tone to it, you wouldn't want to use this unless you wanted to introduce the texture. So I think that this is sort of a good thing for you to kind of do and you, as I said, you can just very easily uh, put these into a binder. I actually have a very big binder here that all of my swatches have gone in. So you can see that my library is quite extensive. Every time I get a new color, 
and then I'm able to just open these up and place them in and you can organize them in whatever way you want. And this one I think is like a three inch binder. It's, it's pretty big. I also have other tests that I've done over, over time and you can use the front and the back of the paper. So, you know, you don't have to worry about wasting things. But, you know, this is one of the ways that you can organize your, your paintings. Uh, another thing that I've also just recently discovered is what I've done for this class is I went to Staples and I bought these little rings. Here, I'll use this one. Okay, and what happens is that this is just a little, it's called a book ring, and I got it at Staples. And it opens up, and there's a little hinge down here on the bottom. And you can come in and use a hole punch and punch into it. And then if you decide that you want to look at a specific color, you can actually take this apart and then you have it and you could just sort of hang it somewhere and it's sort of easy to leaf through. So this is another way of organizing your, your color swatches. And then I also have this particular one that I can also, and it's sort of nice to see if you're looking to match a color, you can go through your swatches and have a nice little library of what you've got. And I also found, this is kind of fun, at Staples, I found these rings that were smaller that are color coded. So if you wanted to get really fancy, you could, you could have something like this that let's say like all your purples could go together like that and then you know you would you would have them all together it's up to you but I just wanted you to start thinking about you're doing all of this hard work and I don't want you to think that you should just be tossing these things aside these are things that you really want to continue to reference back to as the years the months the days or whatever go by as a refresher and uh, I think that having them in one place and having them in a sort of organized manner is a good thing for you to do. So just sort of keep that in mind and come up with a system that's going to work well for you. And uh, if you have any suggestions or you find something that you've done that's really successful, it'd be great if you would share it. We'd love to hear from you and see how you do with your your color reference material.